friends and welcome to Meals with Maria. Today we're going to be making some homemade from scratch items. We're going to do a balsamic dressing, we're going to do a mayonnaise, and then I'm going to show you the first floor of my home because I know people have asked for a while now, what does it look like? What did this kitchen remodel look like? Can you show me more? So here is the time. I figured I'll show that to you along with a balsamic recipe and a mayonnaise recipe, and we'll get this from scratch series going. So I think I'm gonna keep this as a series. We're gonna do old fashioned, making things the old fashioned way or making things from scratch for the next few weeks. I'm gonna put out one video a week where we make different things. So I encourage you to put in the comment box below things that you wanna see made from scratch, things that maybe you're interested in doing yourself that you haven't done before. I personally have done mayonnaise and done balsamic dressing and I've been working with balsamic dressing recently a lot, been making my own and mayonnaise every now and then I make my own. So I figured I'd show you guys exactly how. Both of them are great budget swaps. I recently bought balsamic marinade or balsamic dressing for $4 a bottle versus making it at home as pennies on the dollar, just having my own oil, my own balsamic, a little bit of honey, honey sugar, maple syrup, whatever you have to get your sweetener in and a little garlic, that's pretty much it. It is so simple. Same thing with mayonnaise. Mayonnaise prices are rising, so it's important to be able to make our own from scratch if the budget is tight. If you have some oil and you have an egg, you can make mayonnaise. You just need a little bit of vinegar or some lemon juice and you are in business. So we'll start off by making our balsamic vinaigrette dressing. I am going to double the recipe today. I like to use a mason jar, but if you want, you could use like a bottle that you get. I think it actually comes with like the Good Seasons package dressing. There are some great homemade dressing bottles out there. So go ahead and grab yourself one if you'd rather use that. I find that mason jars are just fine. And hey, make a mess while you're at it because why not pour oil all over the counter? I'm using a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, but you can use just a regular canola vegetable oil if you have that too. Avocado oil works well here as well. Then you wanna use a half a cup of balsamic vinegar. Now, when it comes to dressing, it's basically a half and half rule. So whatever size you wanna do, you wanna do a quarter cup, that's, that's fine too. You can do a quarter cup of each oil and balsamic. Now, because I'm doubling the recipe, I'm gonna add quite a bit of honey here. We're adding four to six tablespoons of honey, and you could always use maple syrup or just regular sugar or any other sweetener alternative that you'd like to use would taste absolutely delicious in this. The thing that's really gonna bring this dressing together is our Dijon mustard. I'm using four teaspoons, or if you're doing a smaller recipe too, and then you're gonna use two crushed cloves of garlic. Now, if you don't have fresh garlic on hand, I've used garlic powder in this recipe many, many times, and it's absolutely wonderful as well. Then as a final add to this recipe, you just wanna add a couple sprinkles of salt, and you can taste this at the end and add more if you like. Pepper is the same thing. And then because I'm making it right in this mason jar, it makes it super easy. I can just put the cover on nice and tight and shake it up until everything has come together. You'll find that the dressing goes from a separate oil and balsamic to a one emulsified liquid. Serve this with your favorite salad or you can even marinate chicken breasts or steak tips in this dressing and you can put it in the fridge for two to three weeks. The next recipe is for a homemade mayonnaise. You just wanna start with one egg, and I'm actually using an old pickle jar to make this because it was the perfect size to fit my immersion blender. You can make mayonnaise in an immersion blender like this. You can even use a small little handheld blender like a Nutribullet, or you can use a larger size, full-size blender. The key is that you need to be able to have an area at the top where you can slowly pour in your oil. Start by pulsing your egg in the blender for about 20 seconds, and then you wanna add one tablespoon of vinegar. I'm using red wine vinegar and one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Now the Dijon mustard part is totally optional and it depends on whether you like that, but when I make a homemade mayonnaise, I love adding a little bit of mustard. I just think it gives it such a nice flavor. Also wanna add about a quarter teaspoon of salt and then pulse all of those ingredients together for another 20 seconds. At this point, you wanna have a cup of oil on hand. I'm actually using olive oil in this case because I'm gonna make an olive oil mayonnaise, but you can use any plain oil. The olive oil definitely has a distinct flavor, so if you're not into that, I totally understand. I've made many a mayonnaise with just a canola oil or a vegetable oil, and I do find that that has a much 
milder flavor and it tastes a lot more like your mayonnaise bought at the store. So it kind of depends on what you're into. You can also use an avocado oil for this. I've heard that's great as well. While you're blending or using your blender processing, you wanna slowly pour in the oil. I'm talking a nice, steady, slow stream. So in this immersion blender, this works out just nicely. I'm able to move things around while I slowly pour in my oil. And you can stop and make sure that everything processes correctly at any time. It does take a little bit of patience, but eventually your mayonnaise comes together and makes a nice, thicker mayonnaise like you're used to from the grocery store. You can get a container of oil at Dollar Tree for $1.25 and you can get an even larger one for a little more than that at Aldi or Walmart and you could probably make two or three containers of mayo with those. And all you need is one egg and a little bit of vinegar again which you could get at Walmart or Dollar Tree for a dollar or potentially less if you were shopping at Walmart. So you're looking at less than three dollars for this mayonnaise and these days it's hard to find that. So I really think that this is a great budget alternative. A mayonnaise like this will last about seven days in the fridge so you do want to make sure that you have a use for it. Having a homemade mayonnaise at an event is also such a special thing for people. I find that when I have homemade mayonnaise, people absolutely love it and flock to it and think it's such a specialty item, even though it was actually less expensive than buying mayonnaise myself. And fun fact, my kids love reading nutrition labels for some reason. I think it's just like numbers and they're trying to learn to read and get their numbers down. So they like to know how many calories is in something. It's definitely not something we talk about around the house, but they like to count and see. So they don't really exactly know what that means. But Julian was looking at this. He's like, is this mini zero calories? Cause it was from the pickle jar. And I'm like, oh no, I think it's a bit more than that, buddy. <laughs> but still pretty funny. Because this makes quite a bit of mayonnaise, it's also a great option to use for a potato salad or a pasta salad, again, for like a potluck or a barbecue, or even just to make ahead for your family for the week so that you have a little something as a side ready to go. Okay, so today, today is the day I'm finally gonna give you a first floor home tour. I know that a lot of people have asked questions about this, my kitchen renovation, what happened with it. I mean, you've obviously seen it in my videos, but what does it look like if we look at the whole thing? How does this come together? Okay, quick interjection. My hair might be windblown from being outside. But when we bought our home, we bought it about seven years ago, the kitchen was cool. The cabinets were handcrafted, but that ended up being a problem for us because as they broke over time, which they did, we would have had to have them made by a carpenter. And that was gonna be very expensive to have the ones that had broke replaced and some of the hardware was going, obviously we can replace hardware, but it was custom. So we debated back and forth whether we should just keep the cabinets as they were and repaint them. The floor was pine and we knew we definitely had to redo the floor, but you know, how little and how much should we do? And we eventually came to the conclusion that we should replace almost everything. We decided to replace the cabinets. And at that point we needed to change out pretty much our appliances, our floors and uh, the, the, the tops of the counters were in original, what were they called, Co Corian, like first generation Corian, and they had a huge crack down the center. So that needed to be replaced as well. So we ended up going with a whole kitchen remodel. We did do it on a budget. So I'll go back to what I was just saying, but I just did want to interject and let you know kind of why we ended up doing a kitchen remodel. We did it about a year ago. And if you go back to my old videos, you'll think I was in a completely different house, but I was actually in the same house, just a different kitchen. So here is my full kitchen. We have our island. I have these chairs, which I absolutely love. Got those at HomeSense. We originally actually got these chairs, but they're actually not really comfortable. So switched them out. Love these ones a lot more. 
and then keep these ones here because the kids actually sit in them. We call these the adult chairs and these the kids chairs because I can wipe these ones up really easily and these obviously are fabric, so no children. The cat though, the cat. So this is the island you, if you remember my videos way back in the day, I had the sink here and actually the stove top was over here too. We switched everything around. So now I have my stove top over here and my sink over here and our window is a little bit smaller, but that's okay. And then we were able to add this really cool lighting over the island and over the sink. Now my husband is an electrician, but he's also just super handy. And I will cut to now this barn that he's built almost 100% by himself without help from anybody else. Um, he had some friends help with the roof, like the shingles, the shingle part, but the rest of it, he actually did all on his own, which is insane. So he also put this entire kitchen in by himself. So I'm very thankful. And that's what helps us to be able to do things around our house for less money. We got all of these cabinets from a local cabinet shop that the guy accidentally ordered the wrong color. And I don't know, he didn't want his boss to find out or something. So he put the entire thing on Facebook Marketplace at cost. I went down there. I showed him the dimensions of my kitchen. We did figure out if we could fit it in and he could. We actually had some extra pieces and we got them all at 100% cost. It was so much cheaper. They are uh, all hardwood cabinets and Dan was able to install them. And then similar thing with our granite countertops, we went, we were able to go direct to um, a place that works like directly with builders and stuff like that and get that for very inexpensive as well. So like, I'm like looking, I knew I was gonna find something that bothered me. You know, like this isn't like set up that nice and I could have cleaned my stove top better, but you know, hey, we're here. But it pays to have an electrician as a husband and just a handy guy overall because like, look, we have this under cabinet lighting and these lights and even lighting underneath here because he cares about that stuff. So I'm very lucky that he's able to put it in and that doesn't cost us like a million dollars. So that's that. We Oh, we also got all the appliances on Black Friday sale for like, I don't know, like two, three thousand dollars, like, you know, the whole set. So they're not the top of the line high quality, but they are fine for us and we love them. So that works out really well. Uh, floor is like a stone floor. And I will tell you guys the one thing I do not recommend, look at this, I just swept and you see how bad that looks. Dark floors pick up absolutely everything that you like could possibly see. So that is, uh, that's the only thing I would not do dark floors again. I also wouldn't do the stone. Um, it's like, they're like stone tiles because, uh, yeah, there's a scratch. The, it scratches like crazy. And we have like foam things on the bottom of these or, you know, like the felt things and it still scratch, scratches like crazy. So I'm not super happy with it, honestly, because then you have to rip the whole thing up to get it fixed. And then I was gonna mop and you can see I have my overseater. <laughs> Got it for my birthday. That's 35 guys, 35 is get no cedar mop for your birthday. I asked for it, um, but I was gonna mop and I was like, no, I'm not gonna mop, not tonight. Tomorrow's Mother's Day, so just a little look at what we're doing for Mother's Day. I made some brownies, literally just box brownie kit. I have, so we also wanna put in, this is my pantry. Does it look great right now? It looks pretty good. I'm okay with it. All right, so this is my pantry and there's actually a ton of space back in here. And what we want to do is knock that out and then put like a, a whole like built-in bar area here. We don't have that right now. So I just have like this really old, I don't know, it's like a um, buffet table that I half painted and whatever. So not looking great, but I just cover it in a tablecloth and you'll never know, right? So I set that up, we have our TV here and I always just set that up for like a holiday thing. So this is my setup for Mother's Day and we'll have some Prosecco and some wine in here. And then JJ made that for me, which was super cute. And we have the kids juices and I'll probably put some water in that pitcher and ta-da, that's it. And that's the Mother's Day area. 
I also have another area over here. Now these windows we're gonna redo because, well obviously we've pulled off the sides of them and they're gonna look like, they'll end up looking like these windows. We actually already have them. They just haven't been installed yet. So yes, eventually these windows will be the same. So we already pulled the trim off of them and that will be so much better. So I have this whole setup for Mother's Day and then like baby stuff and this is something I need to give my sister-in-law. So it is what it is. We got a kid, it's the truth. So then heading through here, we've got, okay, another window that needs to be changed. So it is what it is. And then we head into this room, which is like our dining room area, I guess. And then you guys always are commenting on this hearth and what this looks like. So absolutely love this space. And you know, these are all built-ins. The house is from 1760. And then I have this little sitting area here, which I like. And then these walls, the cat messed up the curtain over here, so I need to fix that. And then these walls, I wanted to put more pictures up, so we're, we're kind of getting there. I've got some forsythias going. Those are fresh from the yard right now. And this is our table all set up. And I kind of, yeah, love this. And then we have another room in here, which I'm gonna show you so quickly because it's not my favorite. This is where the kids hang out and this is my, um, my desk area as well. So not super cool, but, and then heading through here, this is, goes to our basement and you don't want to go down there cause it's like scary old basement. <laughs> 1760 homes are a little freaky in the, uh, in the basements. And this is our living room. Again, not, I'm looking at them like the curtains are all messed up, you know, and the blankets are all messed up, but Hey, this is what we, this is how we do. Uh, we have like the cool built-in over here and then we have another built-in over here and then we have another fireplace over here. Which I'm like, there's stuff on the ground. I think it's from the cat. I think he, um, he's been like clawing at the birch. So these fireplaces don't work, uh, but the wood stove in the other room does and then the baby stuff. But this is, yeah, this is our living room, our living area. Fancy, not, it's just real life. And then we can go in. This bathroom used to be a lot different. My husband was able to redo this as well. And we were able to get the cabinets in here and the sink on a crazy sale. It was like a, you know, floor mount, a floor model that was, they were trying to sell. So we got it for a deal. And this is a quartz top and that's it, and we did the um, beadboard on the walls. I've always meant to like put some pictures up on here, but I haven't really. And then again, like I said, it pays to have an electrician as a husband because we have these, well, that's that's part of that. But then, let me actually turn that. Hello. So we have like a little Edison bulb there, and a little Edison bulb there, and then we have overhead lighting, which is so nice. Yeah, that's our little bathroom. And so that's the cool thing about like the old homes is we get these cool little doors. And that's as far as I'll take you someday. Maybe I'll do an upstairs tour. These floors are like original with the home. So they are like super wide and shiny and cool. And that's what makes this like so much fun. And like I said, this is working. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. When we moved in, the colors were like hideous. There was like this really yellow color in here. So we had this recently painted uh, by a friend of ours who, if you're in the New England area or New Hampshire area and you need a painter, he is phenomenal. He did all of the uh, painting in this room. Uh, not in this room, my father-in-law did this. But this was like green when we first moved in. And then this one was, I wanna say like peach or maybe it was green too. So we did the dark gray and the white, so fabulous work. So that's it for this video on this home tour. I hope you appreciated it, I hope you liked it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see more budget fabulous content and subscribe if you haven't already. I know you've been seeing these videos and been thinking, I need to subscribe to her. Press that button, it really, really helps me out. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos and I will see you all very soon. i
out of you. 